Welcome to the Run for God Run Club, where you will find God in a runner's space. Welcome to the Run for God Run Club. This is your one stop each week to be motivated and inspired to get off the couch and onto the running trail where you can in turn inspire others to do the same. Let's learn, laugh, and leap into running together, giving God the glory for what we are able to do in His name. I am your running host, Dean Thompson. Run for God founder Mitchell Hollis is also in the house to keep things interesting. So we've got some good things on the horizon for Run Club, don't we? We do. We're, we're really excited. Hopefully in the next week, few weeks, we'll be able to, to roll some of these things out and, and let everybody listening in on to, to what we've got going. But we're I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I'm, oh, yeah. I'm very excited. I'm stoked. You guys, you, you, you're in for some, some good things, I'm telling you. Just, uh, just sit tight. And in just a few weeks, yeah, it's it's going to be magical. You know, I'm the type I want to I want to push it all out right <laughs> as we get stuff done. But we all know that things can crash and yeah. things can happen. So we're kind of in that testing phase right now of saying, you know, will this actually work? I think it will. Yeah, and I yeah. think everybody listening is going to be really excited about about the things to come. It's funny with technology. We talk about uh, communication. Mm-hmm. And people communicating, and that seems to be a problem in general in our country right now. Yeah. Uh, but computer programs and other things have to communicate with each other too. And that's, yeah, you don't really understand, or I didn't until we got into what we're doing. But you know, you look at a website and it looks simple, but how many different processes and software and pieces of program are actually working in the background? And it's um, there's not one website that does everything. There's yeah. all different things plugged in, and that's that's been a learning curve for me. Uh, but we're figuring it out. We, yeah. We've got a lot of smart people behind us that are helping us figure it out. But uh, Getting close. Yeah, we're excited. Getting close. We have a race coming up in August too, right? We hope. We yeah, hope. I mean, it's on the schedule, August 15th, uh, Run at the Mill. It's a 5K, 10K, half marathon. As of right now, we are running it. Now, what that might look like come race day, we don't know. You know, you mentioned that you had somebody call you uh, yesterday and ask you kind of what we were doing, and, and we're just not saying anything right now. Right. All we're saying is the race is a go. As of right now, we are running it, um, and and Lord willing, that won't change. Uh, but if it does, we'll make adjustments and, and, as and do what we've got to do. Yeah, as time gets closer, we may find we need to do something a little different than we've done ever in the past, right. and that's okay too. Yeah, you know, we've my son has a, a race coming up in Des Moines, uh, here in a few weeks, first race of the year, and I was on a um, a podcast or not a podcast, but a Zoom meeting. Man, I'm sick of Zoom meetings. I don't know about everybody <laughs> listening, but we were on a Zoom meeting and and they were talking about the race, and it says same as last year, but different. Yeah. And I think that's the the same case for our race. It's going to be the same as last year. There may be some differences, and yeah, um, you know, you, you say what you want about the things that we're having to do, but it's what we're having to do, and and we need to comply. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. I, I don't have any problem. If somebody else is setting the rules, I'm, I'm going to follow them because if I have to set the rules, I want people to follow those. And so. if I set the rules, it's probably not going to be the right rule. We're, we're going to mess it up <laughs> somehow. So I would rather somebody else have that responsibility. In this case, it, 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 at least. That is true. That is true. I've seen some other races out there where you can see them at the starting line and they're, they're like in a grid format where they're yeah. all six feet apart before – the gun goes off, and uh, that's interesting. That's it something is. different. Yeah, it's, and, uh, uh, it's fortunately our timers have the ability to capture. to time it in waves if that's what we have to do. Yeah, um, so we'll 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 be able to figure. You this know, that thing makes out, it sure. tricky though. You know, because that that buddy of yours that you might be running with, you better you better figure out if he started before you or after you on that grid system. Because I heard a I heard a guy talking the other day, and he was talking about hey, him and his buddy were just duking it out. For the finish line it was actually a triathlon and uh he finished one step in front of his buddy and he thought he won but he actually started like five seconds in front of him yeah. at the start line and so he actually lost yeah to his buddy so yeah you gotta be careful but it uh it all work out that just makes it more interesting <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> talking about all of the you know the coronavirus stuff and there's been some good news on on that front there's been some disappointing news too and some people it's funny how it depends on where you listen to some are pushing it one direction some are pushing it the other direction i've heard that in china right now they're actually using a vaccine now we wouldn't be using it in america because it hasn't gone through all the testing procedures and it's a different country a whole different world over there 
But it's exciting to know that uh, there's a vaccine that's far enough along that somebody is trying to use one right now. Yeah, and I think that's the encourage. If there's anything that's good that's come out of this virus, it's it's really rallied the world together. Mm. Now, there's some men fighting and pointing fingers and things like that, um, but we've all pulled together, it seems like, and we're all trying to figure out this vaccine. And I think if we get a vaccine here pretty soon, to my knowledge, it'll be the quickest that ever one has ever been yeah. gotten. And that just shows you what the power of, of pulling together is. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. That's been a good thing to see. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And I've heard something. I just read an article about the old polio vaccine mm-hmm. may be effective against this. And I'm not sure if it eliminates the the idea that you'd get it i think it just makes the symptoms much less yeah uh, but but whatever the case may be anything we can do to lessen the impact of it is fantastic so um it's it's interesting that they would just try stuff like that to figure that out how do you how do you figure that out you take somebody and go hey we're gonna try something on you i mean i'm, I'm sure there's yeah, more to, it to be that, that guy <laughs> yeah. yeah i even told somebody the other day they asked if if i would get the vaccine once it come out and i said I will, but I don't know if I'm going to be the first one to get the vaccine. You know, there's it's kind of like getting that new update on your phone. You don't want to be that first guy. Uh, but I mean, golly bum, just the the miracles of medicine nowadays. Yeah. It's it's incredible that you know we can do what we're doing because 100 years ago this would have been this would have been disastrous oh, yeah. for our culture. Yeah, um, yeah, and uh, it was when it was the Spanish. Exactly. Flu. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and so the fact that we've got it, at least this kind of handle on it is just a testament to you know, the wonders of medicine and, and technology out there. It's just good to know that there are some positive things out there to focus on uh, because there's so much negativity, right. um, not just in the news, just in general. Sometimes it's hard to stay stay up, and it's good to hear some good news every once in a while. It to, is. And it, there's a lot of good news out there. And sometimes there we even have to go looking for the good news because the bad news is so censorious. People like People tune in. And that's a shame. It, it that we a, have to go looking for the good it news. It is a shame. But uh, there's a lot of it out there. There is. There is. And, and there's one thing we know is that, that God is still on the throne Absolutely. today. And he's got a plan in this. No matter. That's right. We may not ever see it on this side of glory. Yeah. I hope we do. I hope we but do. But we may not. But yeah. we know that Scripture says all things work to the good of those who love him. That's right. And, uh, so that's... That's a promise we can hang our hat on. Absolutely. Sure. So hopefully we get on the other, th- other side of this thing soon and we can uh, we can proceed with kind of business as usual or at least something close to as usual. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, as usual, we are proud to be sponsored by the world's greatest digital music platform, J Radio. Again, we're here in their studios. We love J Radio. Uh, and to my understanding, J Radio is also kind of in the same boat we are, and they're trying to do some new things. And so J Radio is going to be getting bigger and better. Um, and I'm not sure exactly when that's going to be, but it's going to be soon. So check out J Radio. You know that moment when you're running? And you settle into that perfect pace. And then the next song comes on. Don't let that happen again. With the new J Radio, you can trust us to make sure that the next song in your playlist will help you keep up that pace. Check out the Radio Active Station on J Radio for all different genres of workout music handpicked for you while you run. Start listening now at jradio.com. All right, so we are back, and remember that if you have questions and if you have other things that you are particular subjects you want to hear us talk about, you can send those messages to dean at runforgod.com. Um, and also, if you don't know what Run For God is, if you happened up on this podcast and you don't understand what Run For God is about, go to runforgod.com. Check it out. There's, there's a lot going on there. As we said, some things will change um, soon, and uh, hopefully... Um, you'll like what you see when we get there. But check out runforgod.com. Hey, Dean, I, sh- I should have said this before the break, but you know, you, you were talking about J Radio and how they got some new exciting things coming. Uh, there's actually going to be a playlist on there by somebody we know pretty soon, and it's my son Lane. All right. Uh, Jared has asked him to put together a playlist of, of kind of his workout music. Now, his workout music and my workout music mm, don't always jihad. They're both Christian. Yeah, uh, but my Christian music and Lane's Christian music are not 
quite the same. But I will say that his his music will pump you up. So kind of be looking out for that. Uh, we'll, we'll send some links out, but you know maybe maybe even Jared to let you and I put together a playlist. Yeah, maybe. I don't so. know if anybody wants to listen to Southern Gospel the whole time they run, but uh, <laughs> but that would be my playlist. Uh, so maybe we'll get to put one together too. But kind of be looking out for that. That's some of the exciting things is is uh, some playlists that they're putting together, and, and maybe some of your favorite Christian artists will have a, yeah, a playlist yeah. as well. So kind of well, look out for that. And I have done some bike workouts to Lane's music, and so I know what Lane's music is about. And, uh, yeah, it'll get you up and going for it will, sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> uh, hey, don't forget, we would love to hear your story. Um, your story can touch people in ways you don't even know. I was talking to – uh, somebody who's a Run for God instructor just yesterday. And and as we were talking, she was talking about how sometimes you touch people in ways you don't even know and that you you have impacts on other people's lives that you never even hear about. Mm-hmm. And you're that way. And you have a story. And your story may be exactly what somebody else needs to hear. So go to runforgod.com and submit your story at through the devotions tab and let us know what your what your story is because we'd love to share it. Absolutely. And um, how many people do you think out there have a story worth telling, Mitchell? Everybody. Everybody has a story. That's and right. my story may not be the story that you need to hear, but your story is definitely something that somebody needs to hear. That's so right. we all have a story and it's all impactful whether you think it is or not. Absolutely. Talking about stories, we have a story this morning from a faithful run club member, Travis Hess. Mm -hmm. Um, He's from Rossville, Pennsylvania, and his story is entitled, I Finally Found My True Calling, parentheses, the story of how running and God changed my life. Uh, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12.1. If you haven't already guessed, this happens to be my favorite Bible verse and acts as a motto for my life. It makes perfect sense since I love the sport of running and I love God. Plus, it's a great analogy for my life's journey to this point. My 45 plus years on this earth have been filled with scattered God moments, but not until recently have I found my true calling. As you will see, the Run for God ministry plays a big part in my story. I've been running on and off since my teenage years. It all started back in 1988 when I decided to join my local high school track and field team. I always loved being active and running around as a child, but I really found my niche in the 400-meter distance my freshman year. I stayed committed to this grueling lap through my first semester in college and began to wonder for the first time, could this be my calling? Ironically, the entire decade of my 20s was totally void of running, though. Instead, it was spent concentrating on finishing college, getting married, and starting a family. Then shortly after I turned 30, I got bit by the running bug again. I went out for a run one day, and I never looked back. But then came 2007. My world and first marriage were turned upside down. Fortunately, my running didn't suffer, and I used this time to reconnect with God. He used my running as a great stress reliever, which made me stronger in the process, both physically and mentally. So even though I hit a bump in the road, my 30s consisted of a slow but steady increase in my speed and distance. But it wasn't until I turned the big 4-0 that I hit my stride and my life really took a turn for the better. First, I met my love, the love of my life. Secondly, I made God number one in my life. I can say that God was always there in the background, but never that top priority he needed to be. Again, thank you, Run for God, for helping me finally con- connect all the dots and run with endurance the race that is set before me. You showed me the similarities between my running and my love of Christ and how to share these moments with others. See, that's the thing. I've always been a pretty shy guy, especially when it comes to talking in front of more than a handful of people. So when I first heard about this Run for God ministry and found out what it was all about, I really wasn't sure if it was for me. 
Fast forward four years to 2017, and that all changed. I was reading the Erwin McManus book, Chasing Daylight, when something magical happened. I realized that I was wasting my life waiting for God to make the first move when I needed to take charge and seize the moment. Right away, I met with my church pastor and we talked about me hosting my very own Run for God 5K Challenge class. He, of course, was on board immediately. I was excited but nervous at the same time. Could I really do this? I hosted my first class during the summer of 2017. It was small in numbers, only two students, but successful nevertheless. I am now hooked after just completing my second class of 15 students. I am looking forward to even more surprises in 2019. God gave me all the tools I needed to meet this challenge at exactly the right time. He knows me so well. He is my perfect partner. I am currently hosting a Run for God club on Saturday mornings. My life feels complete at long last. I feel content. I can finally say that I'm truly happy. I finally found my true calling. Thank you, Run for God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You are so good. Great story, Travis. Uh, You know, Dana, I I jotted down just a few things that that really stuck out to me in Travis's story. Number one, I think 400-meter runners and 800-meter runners, they're a little bit crazy. It have to be. That's got to be the worst distance. I mean, I love long distance because I don't like to hurt <laughs> that bad. I mean, that is such a cute pain, and I've hurt. I've never been an 800-meter runner. I've run some 800s before, but I heard that is 400 and 800 is like the worst distance because it's 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 still kind of in the sprint yeah. distance, I guess, but yeah. sprinting for 800 meters is just torture. We had some kids trying to do 250s the other day. We thought they were going to die. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that was the first thing that stuck out to me is, is God bless Travis being a 400 runner. Uh, <laughs> talking in front of crowds, how many times have we heard that? Oh, a million. How many over times have we heard that I can't become a run for God instructor because I don't like to, to talk in front of crowds? And yep. Travis is just yet another example. I was an example. And so many people, w- when they finally turn that fear over to God— it changes them. And and I'm not saying it's the, the Run for God program. God may be calling you to do another program, and you're saying, I can't do that. I, and I encourage you, if you sense that God is calling you to do it, whatever it is, it may be going up to somebody at your work and sharing Christ with them. That's a pretty good indication. I always say I know when God is talking to me. A lot of times I know when God is talking to me because what I'm hearing doesn't really make sense because it's not something that Mitchell would think. Yeah. Well, if that's not something I would norm, not ordinarily think. Who else could it be? It could be one of two. And if it, if it's something good that furthers the kingdom, then I know it's not the evil one. Right. So I know it's God. Um, so, you know, yeah, whatever it is, if God's pushing you, nudging you. You know, I think about when, when he said that, I think about he, he said, I needed to seize the moment. And I think about Moses in Exodus when he had the children of Israel at the edge of the Red Sea. And and God was saying, go. And what did Moses try to do? Let, let me pray about this some more. And God yeah. said, stop praying and go. Take action. Take action. And so many times we, we pray and pray and pray, and that's necessary. But so many times we're right where Travis was, we're right where Moses is, and we're just scared take that action, so mm-hmm. we default back to, well, let me pray some more. Sometimes God doesn't want us to pray anymore. Yeah, He wants us to do what he's telling us to do. So that's it's a great reminder in Travis's story here that um, just just take that plunge, whatever it is, if God's calling you to do it. And that goes to both both spiritual and, and running. I mean, f- from a spiritual Absolutely. standpoint, God's pushing us to do things, but sometimes we make a big deal out of running, too, and just getting out the door like it's some big decision. Yeah, how many people listening? I want to challenge everybody listening. How many people get reinvigorated with running when they get something new? New pair of shoes, a new watch, a new GPS. It's the running is based on is is motivated by, and I actually think your 
story this week talks a little bit about this, but they're 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 making their run and they're they're motivating themselves on things external to the running itself. Yeah. And uh yeah, just yeah. Just, just, just do it, as Nike it. would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no brand endorsement here, but just yeah. do it. But they got that one right. They did. They got Absolutely. that one right. Question: Have you found your ultimate calling, and are you waiting for God to make the first move, or are you seizing the moment? We kind of talked about that. Um, you know, that's the ultimate calling. I think about those words, and I think about that's how you and I found ourselves here. Yeah, it's, it's the fact from, that we're standing here. Right, exactly. Uh, and and sometimes, even today, I still question that calling. Like, God, why why did you put me and Dean to it? There are a lot better orators and Bible scholars and professional runners who are also Christians that could probably do a much better job than we're doing. But he's got us here. And, and I think he's got a sense of humor because... He knows me and you can't take the credit for this. Right. We're not smart enough to <laughs> to figure all this out. I mean, we're still trying to figure this technology out. You know, Amen. the guy that just come in and set this podcast up for us, he said, all you got to do is hit the space bar when you're done. Yeah. You know, so, like. so yeah, it's, uh, I have found my calling <laughs> and, and I love what I'm doing here. Um, I think God calls me to do other things at times. And sometimes I, I go back to praying or I, I wade or I say it's not the right time. And, and, and Travis's story just reminds me that in those times, because God doesn't call us just to one thing. Yeah. He calls us to things every day. Yeah. And it may be, it may be giving that handout to some, somebody that needs it on the side of the road, or it, it may be talking to that person who seems discouraged or, or calling that person who, who just needs to hear from somebody. And we get those moments every day. Yeah. Many times during the day, yep. and it's how many times are we sensitive enough? Are we are we close enough to God and His Word and in prayer to hear those? Number one, but then when we hear those, are we taking action? Because we're going to answer for those one day. Absolutely, all those times that we said, "Not the right time, God." We're gonna we're gonna have to give account of that. Yeah, yeah. So how do we know what our ultimate calling is? We we talked about just do it and and plunging forward and and putting action. But there's a time to to reflect and to figure out too, isn't there? To find that ultimate calling. I mean, all I can speak to is me. Yeah. Um, and you know, run for God in general was so far outside my comfort zone. I was I was not uh, an expert in the field, in either side of the field, the running or the the spiritual. Um, but I thank God that I I was close enough to Him at the time that. Um, he he began to speak to me. He began to, and, and it wasn't an audible voice, but it was a deep conviction. I could tell the Holy Spirit was just working on my heart. This is what you've got to do. This is what you got to do. And he confirmed that through outside sources. That's yeah. the important part many times is it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to decide if it's, is this Mitchell talking or is this God talking? But God will oft, oftentimes put uh, confirmations around you through mm-hmm. other people or circumstances and and we we say it all the time. There are no coincidences. Yeah. And you know we joke about it a lot, but you know many times through our run for God journey, me and you, uh, we may be bantering back and forth about something, and we're trying to decide. And and God will put circumstances in our place. You know the way we got into this studio. Yeah. I mean J Radio and J One Hundred Three were so kind and just saying, "Hey, come in and do this." We'd been thinking about doing this for a long time. Yep. But God opened those doors. So you. You've got to be close enough to him to, number one, hear him, and number two, recognize the doors that are opening. You know, I, yeah. I pray for billboards. I don't yeah. want signs. Uh, but a lot of times it is a small sign, and we've yeah. got to be looking. Yeah. Yeah, I think there are times when we're supposed to, to wait and, and, and have that billboard come up on the road as we're traveling. Um, we should be traveling, though, and right. not, not sitting still. Exactly. Um, that's kind of the, the idea of a billboard is you see it while you're moving. Um, uh, but I think it is easy sometimes to use the excuse that, well, I'm waiting to hear from God. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I would say, I know for me, I'm guilty of that. I think we probably all are at one time or another because because that thing that we know that we probably should take that first step before is outside of our comfort zone, and it's hard. hard. Mm-hmm. And so we, we keep saying, well, I, just, I want to hear one more confirmation from God. And, and so if that's something that's holding you back, I think that that's, again, 
no fault. We're all looking for those answers, and we all sometimes are unsure when the first step should be taken. Um, yeah, and I think there there comes a point in time where where God has stopped prompting. Yeah, you know, will. it's it's kind of like talking to your kids, and you tell them, and you tell them, and you tell them, and then there's consequences. Yeah. You know, M- Moses could have said, "Okay, we're going to pray right here at the at the Red Sea," but what was coming? What was going to happen? if they waited one more time or waited for one more confirmation. Lights out. Lights out, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the army was coming. Yep. And so I don't even remember what your question was. Well, it, but, well, the thing, the thing that I think about is I think about, okay, I'm running a race. Right. And as I'm running that race, there's hills, there's turns, there's other things that are coming up. But I don't ever stop moving. Right. I, I plan for them as they come and – uh, make those decisions about how hard I push around that next curve or up that next hill or down that next hill based on on the circumstances around me. But I don't stop and wait and, th- and think, hmm, should I turn right here or should I go straight? I just do it yeah. because I've already looked at it ahead of time. And I think that's kind of how, how well, it is. Well, and I think, I think what you're saying is that we, we keep doing what God has already told us, you know, because I, sometimes God, I mean, God has three answers, yes, no, and wait. Yeah, And sometimes it is wait, but we don't just drop our hands and say, we're not going to be a Christian for right now until God speaks again. Yeah, We always go back to where God spoke last. That's right. And that's what we're supposed to do is is not that we're looking backwards, but we're doing the last thing that God told us to do yep. until he opens that next door. And that is so hard. Mm-hmm. I know that's the worst thing my kids like to hear. They would rather hear no than wait. <laughs> yeah. And... uh but and it's hard. It, yeah. it is hard. But um, yeah, if we get those priorities in order, um, yeah. And I get them out of order every day, and it's it's, oh, it's hard. And that's that's just part of this journey that we have with Christ. Well, it's part of being human. It is uh, uh, in our our flawed selves. So here's the question for everybody out there: How can you? seize this moment what is holding you back is it because you're waiting is it because you're not you're not 100 percent sure Uh, and if so what can you do to get sure and to feel more sure to what god is telling you to do Uh, but a lot of people i know know what their calling is Mm -hmm. or should be uh, but they're hesitant to do it because of that that comfort zone right um so the question is, how, how can we move forward? Um, you know, uh, Mitchell's talking about how he, he wants to get everything going right away. And Mitchell has a bias for action. You know, it's mm-hmm. I, I want to be doing something. I right. want to be advancing the ball all the time. And sometimes that's a bad thing. Sometimes it can be <laughs> because we can go into it too fast. It is right. possible to go too fast and go yeah. into things a little too fast. Um, but if you're not one of those people, I know people who are just paralyzed by – Right. The idea of when do I take action? Right. And my advice would be to to take some kind of action, to do something physically and mentally to move forward on whatever it is. Even if it's a small step, it's not the full step. Right. right. And there's nothing wrong with with praying. I mean, I, I always I always tell people, talk to God just like you mm-hmm. talk to your dad. Mm-hmm. You know, God, this isn't quite clear for me. Please mm-hmm. make it clear. Having those very frank conversations with god is what he wants make your request be known to god god it's not clear and he will make it clear absolutely he Mm -hmm. will it it Mm -hmm. may not be the clarity that you want but it will be clear whatever the answer is many times and uh just like moses but you got to be prepared for whatever that answer is um so many times we and we are to pray um in anticipation that the request will be answered but the the request what so many times we mistakenly think that the request will be answered that we're going to get what we want that that's not the the request will be answered right but it may not be the answer we want and so so many times we blur those lines but it's but yeah i mean and and i know we're we're belaboring this point but pray about it Get clarity on it and do it. And do it. The do it is the hard part yep. many times. And just, again, just do it. Yeah. And Travis's last question here is, is God your top priority? And then why or why not? 
He is, but he's not always, if yeah. I'm just being very transparent. And that's something I struggle with daily. Um, you know, when I get up in the morning, I have a choice to make. I can go sit down in my office and I can open my Bible up and I can dig into his word and do what I know that I'm supposed to do. Or I can let my hectic morning dictate and head out the door without having my quiet time. For me, that sets the priorities in my day. Yeah. And if I don't start the morning that way, which there are times that I don't start the morning in prayer with God, I feel it all day. Yeah, It, it makes a humongous difference. Um, and the more you get in God's Word, the more contrast you will see when you don't do it. And that's a good thing. That's yeah. a good thing. It's good because yeah. you, you create that stark difference of starting my day in prayer and the Word with God or starting my day in the hectic schedule of life. Yeah. And uh, it's it's a very stark contrast. Yeah, and I think it's important to understand that we can't just ignore all of the other things that are going on around us. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we've got responsibilities and things that we have to take care of, and all that's fine. But I would say this, and, and I don't even know if I'm out of line saying this, but if, if you have a question on whether God is the top priority in your life, then he's probably not, right? Right. Um, you'll know if he is, and uh, and yeah, I'm just like you. There's days where there's days where I, he is. He clearly is all day long, mm-hmm. and then there's days where I'm clearly like I'm on Dean's agenda. And the worst thing you can do is is have that day where he's not. And, and I, I say that kind of that sounds kind of harsh when I say that because he is Lord of our life. But the, I'm using my quiet time. Is, is an example. There's days when I get up and that just didn't happen. The worst thing you can do is let us discourage, that discourage us and say, oh, we messed right. up. You know, the devil wants nothing more than to put the thought in your head, you've messed up, you failed, you need to just quit that whole quiet time in the morning stuff. Because we know what you do the most of is what you win at. Yep. It's not what you do always, it's That's what right. you do the most of. That's right. So, there is grace there. Yeah. If if you miss it, now that's not saying that that's your excuse to miss it. You know, there's there's grace and our sins are covered, but that doesn't say the Bible doesn't say go out and sin. <laughs> uh, but there is grace there, and that's that's comforting. So, yeah, I mean, don't get discouraged if you you mess up that day because well, we're going to mess up. Absolutely, it's just like running. You know, if you miss a day of running that you meant to run, and something came up, or you know, maybe you you gave into that idea that I just don't feel like it today. Well then try not to let that happen again. Right. You know, the, the next day, be a different person. But there's people out there like me who have that, that schedule that they like to check off every yeah. evening of, did I get that running? And it drives me crazy, and it, it frustrates me when I don't get that check. But you've got to learn to get past that. That's absolutely, yeah. Leave that check blank and go to the next day. Focus forward. Yeah, Focus exactly. forward. Don't worry about what's, what's happened before. So, hey, listen, if you're like Travis and – um, you haven't found your calling as as he was several years ago. Um, hopefully, you're on the trail to finding out what that is. Uh, and and if not, maybe you have already found your true calling. And if you have, congratulations because it's a good feeling mm-hmm. when you're there. So, um, great story from Travis. We appreciate Travis so much. So, uh, we've got another thing coming up with. Uh, Come on, let's go. And the Big Share app, If we've talked about it before, but the Big Share app allows you to share your story and it allows you to be included with a lot of other stories that are phenomenal, crazy good God stories. So go to the Big Share app, share your story there, and they may pick it up here at the Partners for Christian Media folks and, uh, and share your story to literally tens of thousands of people. Mm-hmm. There is power in people's stories. It's a challenging time. What do you do when everything you believe about God is being tested and God doesn't look like the good father that he says he does? You've got layers and layers and layers of hate in your heart. It it takes God to clean it out. Your story can help encourage others around the country, just like these stories have. You can walk through a simple process of sharing your story with the Big Share app. Download the Big Share app in your app store to start sharing hope with others. And we are back, and I don't know if you've seen in the news lately, Christian Coleman, 
the number one 100 meter sprinter in the world has been suspended and may be out of the Olympics for next year, all because he didn't show up for a drug test. And there's some controversy surrounding those those circumstances, but isn't there always? I, I didn't know about this. I just saw it in your notes. How, how do you let that happen? Well, again, it, it's it's a shame, um, but this is the world that we live in today that we're so focused on trying. There's, there's been a, a, a bunch of these lately. Um, I can't remember the number, but there's been more than a dozen people. Now, he's the most famous, obviously, but there's been more than a dozen that have uh, recently uh, been suspended for either failing a drug test or missing a drug test. And it's just so sad. One of them was Wilson Kipsang, who was a former world record holder in a marathon. Um, there's just been, there's been, been a lot of that lately. And we're so focused on wanting to be the best. Uh, I saw or I heard about a, um, a thing with Lance Armstrong. Mm, I and, was just thinking about him. And when he was, you know, when he was at the top of, he was, you know, we all know his story by now that he, he did take, uh, was blood doping. Mm -hmm. And his comments were, everybody was doing it. And if I didn't do it, you could, if you didn't do it, you couldn't win. It was impossible to win without doing it. And that's an unfortunate feeling uh, that we have now that nowadays. Yeah, and that's the sad reality is that many times that's that's not just Lance's mentality. That's that's kind of the mentality of many parts of our society today. Is yep. well, this is the only way you're going to get ahead. So that's what you, that's just part of doing business or part of part of the sport or whatever it is. And and it's not. It's it's not. I, I think about athletes out there who have who have been. Um, Oh, what's the word? They've been very upright in their sports, yeah. and and th they may not have succeeded as much as others. But I think a Tebow, for example. I mean, yeah, and, and it wasn't doping; it wasn't anything like that. But he stood on his his principles. He stood on his Christian faith, and he. I don't know if he got run out of the NFL, or oh, I, he wound up not making it very far in the NFL. But look at the platform he created, yeah. and look at how how much of an impact that Tim Tebow is still making today to millions and millions of people every day, yeah. and it's because he he did the hard thing. You know, That's we, right. we talked about just a few minutes ago about making that leap. Sometimes that leap is is not being the best. It's saying no because sometimes that the impact of saying no to something can be the greatest impact because people know what he gave up because he stood on his values. Now, you can argue all day long if he was actually the better football player, but that's kind of beside the point. Yeah, it uh, is. We know it's... that he stood on his principles, and he would not waver, and he would not compromise. But so many times today, compromise is just part of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel like we would have less of this cheating and less of these uh, these, these nefarious things going on if we just had more Jesus. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. That's no question. Pretty pretty simple solution there. Um, and, you know, I, and I, I'm not saying that some of these people that are doing this are Christians. It's very possible. I don't know right. uh, that to be true or not true um, because even as Christians, the, the evil one gets in our head and, exactly. and convinces us to do things and compromise on things that – we normally wouldn't in, right. in because we're trying to keep up with the Joneses or whatever the case may be. And, and let me say this, and I'm just going to say this bluntly. If, if you are having your quiet time every morning, if you're in the Word and you're talking to God every morning like we're called to do, it's going to be really hard, really hard to make that decision to do whatever it is, the compromising thing. Yeah. Um, Many times when, when we miss those days, miss those opportunities, and, and we start to grow close, further and further from God, that opens that chasm up wider and wider for the evil one to step in. And he gets louder and louder. And he gets louder and louder. But when we keep that gap closed or, or almost closed, meaning the, the time that goes between us, the, the times that we actually talk to God or in his word and, and doing the things that we need to be doing, the, the tighter we keep that gap, the less room there is for yeah. other things, other voices, the evil one to step in. And yep. um, 
Yeah, I mean, it is. It is yes. sad, and I, I, I pray that, you know, all these athletes will see the light and that it's it's just not worth it. Not only is it damaging them, it's damaging the sport. It is, and that's the sad part about it because yeah. we, we want the sport to be successful you know, and be clean. And and I know we need to move on past this, but I'll never forget when, when Lance Armstrong did his interview with Oprah Winfrey, and he kind of finally came clean. You know, up until that point, he was very defiant. He he ruined a lot of people's lives yeah. over this whole thing. And I'll never forget, my son was very young at the time, Lane, who, who's a cyclist and a triathlete, and, and he had posters of Lance on his wall. Yeah. You know, he had just come through the seven Tour de France's just on top of the world. And I'll never forget, I struggled with whether to let Lane watch that Oprah interview because he was young, and I knew, you know, there was – Knowing Lance, there's probably going to be a little bit of language in it, and just the subject matter, yeah. was it appropriate? And and I decided that it was because many times we can tell our kids things, but when they see it for themselves, it makes a big impact. And so I let Wayne watch that interview, and if you've never watched that interview, go back and watch it. Um, but Lance basically just came clean and said, I'm a cheater. Yeah. Say what you want. That was the gist of the interview. Yeah. And I'll never forget, Lane went to bed, and I never, I didn't say, we didn't talk about it after that interview. And I went up the next morning to wake him up for school, and all the Lance Armstrong posters were gone. Wow. And that's sad, because you think it's a, it's a selfish thing to do, and it's affecting the sport, yes, but all those tens of thousands of people, kids that are looking up to them, it, and it's just a good a good example of our actions – yeah. As much as we think it's just me, nobody else is involved. It's a ripple effect it all around our life. lives. Everything, that, everybody that we come in contact with. Yeah. So we got to think about that. Yep. We got to start the day off in prayer and talking to God Absolutely. and reading His Word. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good thoughts. Talk about thoughts. It is time for Dean's thoughts. A time when I share something I've written about the intersection between running and faith. And this week it is something called. Go fly a kite. I love the title. (laughs) I remember when I was a kid and I loved flying a kite. These days, I don't see many kites in the air. Today's youngsters have video games and a million other things to keep them busy. Though there is no equivalent in the USA, in Japan, they have a term for kite enthusiasts. Tako kichi, which means kite crazy. Man, I miss flying kites. I remember one thing all too vividly that was frustrating when attempting to fly my kite. What happens when there's no wind? I remember getting out at the end of a big field and running to create the wind. The kite would lift off the ground and begin to fly. It would go higher and higher, but eventually I would run out of field and I had to stop running. What happened? The kite would drop to the ground. Sometimes the kite would stay up there if there was more wind up high than there was at the ground, but more often it would just float helplessly to the ground. Sometimes I would go back to the other side of the field and try it again, usually with the same results. It's simple. No wind, no flying. Many people will try to motivate themselves to run using quotes, books, social media, and anything else they can think of to stay encouraged. Maybe they'll have a friend who runs with them and keeps them uh, and keeps helping them out the door. Inspiration is not too difficult to come by, and those things are great. They keep many of us going from day to day. But I submit that it's a lot like running with a kite. What happens when the motivation is gone? What happens when you Don't go looking for it. What happens when the running partner can't run or moves away? Like the kite with no wind, we float back to earth and stop running because the motivation was artificially created. And don't get me wrong, those things are not bad. As a matter of fact, (laughs) the Run for God Run Club seeks to do just that. But there needs to be more depth to our commitment than that. The motivation has to be embedded in your heart and your soul to be able to keep running when there is no wind or no external force to keep you going. There are many great benefits to running. Don't forget what they are because that's the fuel you need to keep training when the wind dies. How about your spiritual life? Many people are going to church every Sunday for their weekly dose of motivation. They count on that to keep them going during the week. It's their wind. 
Over the past few months, we have had our weekly dose diminished, if not completely taken away. Churches have done a great job of filling gaps with online services, but it's not the same as being together with other believers. How have you fared? Have you grown closer to God? Or have you had a difficult time staying close to Him? If you have grown closer to Him, it may be because you've spent more time with Him, reading, studying, and praying. It's only by direct connection that we can keep our relationship with God strong. External motivation has limitations. Internal motivation through God is limitless. Whether you're talking about your relationship to God or your motivation to run, the impetus has to come from inside. When your motivation is internal, it's like God blowing directly into the path of your kite. When he provides the wind, your kite will never fall. And the wind never stops. Great word, Dean. Yeah, you, you know, I did a, this reminded me of a video that we did, I don't know, a year or two ago. And the, the question on the video was, do you have grit? And yeah. I talk about how, to me, when, when motivation runs out, and it does for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm one of those, I don't, I don't quite believe in burnout. I mean, there are times where people get burnt out on things, but a lot of times it's exactly what you're talking about. It's they're keeping things in their life to keep them motivated, and there is a lack of depth or grit uh, mm-hmm. in their life. You know, I, I we have I've had this conversation with my son about triathlon. You know, he he races at a very high level, and and um, it's hard because there's days where. He's the only one doing that workout. You know, he'll yeah. go out on a 40, 60, 80 mile bike ride by himself at times. And it's easy when it's with a group of friends or it's an organized ride or it's easy when they're going to a cross country workout and there's a lot of other people there. But what happens when there's nobody there? Yeah. And it's the same thing in our walk with Christ. And it's 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 been illuminated very brightly the past few months. And you're mm-hmm. right. You know, church is not there. What is our faith based on? What is what is our relationship with God based on? Is it a true relationship, or was it that we were being motivated each Sunday? And that's that's dangerous yeah. uh, for us to go and look to the pastor. To that's not the pastor's role. Nope. To motivate us, it's it's the pastor's role to introduce us and to help clarify what God's word is saying. But if you're if you're relying on your pastor to motivate you. How many times have we heard, well, I just wasn't getting fulfilled, so I, I switched churches? Mm, yeah. That's dangerous. It now, is. I'm not throwing any stones, yeah. but that mentality is 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 rampant it in is. our churches nowadays. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, this is just a great Yeah, I think sometimes story. we complain that the wind isn't blowing <laughs> when what God wants us to do is he wants us to rely on him to give us that wind, and he's ready for us to connect with him so that he can be that wind, and we're just we're out there running with our kite instead. We don't like the wind direction. We don't like the direction of the we, wind. We That's keep trying to run with the wind when God's saying, turn around and that kite of fly. Yep. But so many times it comes down to preferences. It does. And um, that's dangerous. But we know he is sufficient. Absolutely, he is. If you've ever participated in any sport, you've probably met a great coach. Great coaches inspire us to do more than we ever thought possible. You can be the leader that helps others achieve things they never thought possible. You, yes, you have the ability and the opportunity to be that person. All you need is a heart to help people and the ability to follow a plan. The Run for God 5K Challenge will come ready to help you inspire those around you. The step-by-step guide will direct you how to plan, pray, and train people both physically and spiritually. You can help them become more fit in their health and in their walk with Christ. Share your passion. Go to runforgod.com to find out how to inspire others to accomplish big things. So if you haven't thought about being a coach, now would be a great time to think about that so check that out hey father's day was just a couple of weeks ago Um, as a coach uh, i see parents who support their athletes in different ways Um, if you had 
a dream parent. What does that parent look like? The, the, the parent of an athlete that you coach, what does that parent look like? <laughs> You're going to try to get me in trouble yeah. here. <laughs> um, it, it's one who we coach a lot of kids, so I'm putting in that context, right. um, kids under 18. Right. Uh, it's, it's one that we say it a lot. Let me be the bad guy. Right. Yeah. As, as the coach, um, they're supportive when, when we're at a cross country practice or a race or whatever it is, we're getting on the the guys and girls pretty hard. We're we're the coach. The last thing they need is to get in the car and hear that regurgitated. Right. Um, so, I guess my dream parent would be the parent who knows the roles, even if they're thinking it. You, you, they just heard it. They know it. Many times you don't even have to say it. That's right. If they're if they're an athlete who is doing well in this sport, you don't got to say anything. I know yeah. my son Lane. You don't have, and I make the mistake of saying things too many times. <laughs> but yeah, that would be my dream. Yeah. Parent is they they know the role of the coach and the parent. They support what you do, right? Um, and then edify that child when whenever they have the opportunity to exactly. talk about it. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a great way to do it. Just not fill their head with excuses. Because I've seen that see too. That. Yeah. I've seen seen parents who every time they have a bad race, sometimes you just need to say, "Man, that was a tough day, wasn't it?" Rather than uh, and be supportive in that way, rather than, "Well, you know, if it hadn't been so hot, or if you know, if you hadn't uh, your shoe hadn't come untied, or whatever, you know, insert your your excuse." And so many times we can do that, and, and we see that done, and and you're you're setting the kid or the athlete in general up for failure because mm-hmm. sometimes just like you said the athlete needs to know you just messed up or yeah. it just wasn't your day or but when we constantly i mean yeah you, you yeah. there's a litany of things that we hear after every race and 90 percent of them aren't the case it's just that it was a bad race but we've got to learn to deal with failure sometimes yeah and yeah, I don't want my child to fail, but sometimes that's the best thing for them. Yeah. And I think, yeah, you know, God's hitting me right now saying sometimes that's the best thing for us. Yeah. It's a, our, our relationship with God is no different. Sometimes God doesn't want us to fail. Let's start with that. But sometimes he allows us to because there's always a lesson to be learned. There's value in, in failure. We, we, we don't learn very many lessons when we're on top. Yeah. Put it that yeah. way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's time to share as we do every week, why running is so awesome. And so this time I thought I would share this watching races. I know, I know, hear me out. I'm not talking about running. I'm talking about watching, but as a runner, what's interesting about races and watching races, whether you're watching the Boston marathon on TV or you're watching, uh, you're at a local high school cross country meet or a track meet or anything like that. And whatever you're watching running, you understand a little bit about what it feels like mm-hmm. to be that runner. Now mm-hmm. you might not know every intricate detail of how they train and all that stuff. And you may not train to the level they do and, and all of that, but you at least know a little bit about what it feels like to be that runner and what it feels like to hurt a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's cool. Um, It always stumps me when somebody says watching a marathon is boring um, because I just love to watch that whole play, everything play out and how it happens. and, um, And I hope it's not the same people who say that soccer is exciting that are saying that. Because that's what I hear from from soccer enthusiasts is you just need to understand the game better. Well, we understand the game when it comes to right. running. We should be excited about. Yeah, it. and I love to watch. I love to watch a good marathon. I watch. I watch the Boston Marathon and streaming on on the internet or or the Olympics. But some of these pure runners and and I don't put myself in a pure runner category. I put you and I put my son Lane in a pure runner category, and Lane likes to watch run practices i've been watching in the past week he's been pulling up of these top runners and he's watching their workouts and now that to me is pretty boring (laughs) but he loves it and i think you're probably the one that told him to do it yeah probably so and uh so yeah it's uh, do it it every week yep (laughs) but it but it is to your point yeah it is fun to watch because you know the struggles that are going on inside and and that's i love to see 
people overcome in adversity. And that's when you tow the line of a of a marathon, when you stepped up to the line, you know that you're in for two, three, four, five, six, however long it takes you yeah. of mental Jedi games. That's <laughs> and, I like it, Jedi games, yeah. And uh so you you can almost see what they're thinking. Yeah. And it's fascinating. It yeah. is fascinating. Um, our motivational thought for the week is this, um, and this isn't a quote from anybody else. It's just something I was thinking is, if you're having trouble getting motivated, try changing what you're listening to. Mm-hmm. We talk a lot about, and a lot of people like to listen to music when they're running. Uh, there's nothing wrong with music. If you've got a playlist that you listen to that gets you really motivated, great. But sometimes things get a little stale and you need to do something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So. Maybe you need to listen to nothing. Maybe mm-hmm. you need to go out and run without the music in your ears, and you need to try that. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you need to listen to a new artist. Maybe you need to just pick something out there. You know, go out there and say, "I love this type of music. What's a good suggestion?" and and find something. Mm-hmm. Um, a new genre. Maybe I don't listen to very much country music. Maybe I need to put on some country and go for a run. Mm-hmm. And maybe that would. Uh, an audio book or a podcast, mm-hmm. particularly the Run for God Run Club podcast. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, that's I a, think I hear it's good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but something different. Try something different. If you're stuck and you feel, we talked about being burned out a few minutes ago. If you feel like you're at that point where things are getting stale, and then try something different. And a lot of whatever you've got going on in your ear can be a big key. And most of us, when we're struggling with motivation, we, we become insane. And, and I say insane because what's the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. We do that all the time. Yes, we so do. So by definition, we're insane for sticking to what we've been doing. It's, and many times, well, this is the way we've always done it, and it's good enough for now. Okay, so keep struggling. Keep, yeah. Keep struggling with motivation. But if you change something, you yeah. know, and like my wife, every time she gets a new pair of shoes, man, her she's her, fired up. I, absolutely, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, sometimes we gotta find those, yeah, those motivational things. Yeah. Speaking of motivation, that's what we're here for. That's what the Run Club is about. It's about motivation. It's about trying to help you be more excited about your running and your walk with Christ. And um, when you join Run Club. You support the Run for God ministry in addition to the fact that you get all of these other things. And those things that you get as a Run Club member are multiplying quickly. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see in the next uh, month or so, you're going to see new things coming Mm -hmm. up. And we we keep trying to make things a little bit different as we go. And so hopefully you're seeing that um, and you're enjoying either the videos or the podcast or um, the written form uh, in email. Some people just or like the to Thursday read it. night lives. Or... The th- yeah, the Thursday nights, uh, the running plans, the just the idea that uh, I've had a few emails from a few people saying, "Hey, I've got this problem. Is there something that that I need to do different?" Right. Um, you know, just a, a question answered that you're wondering. Whatever it may be, um, you've got access to all that. Discounts on Run for God gear. Yeah, I mean that's pretty awesome. And for too. nine dollars and ninety seven cents a month. What? I mean, come on. It's nine dollars and ninety seven cents a month. I I can I can go blow that pretty quick at a lo- local coffee joint, and uh, you can spend more than that going through the car wash one time. I mean, yeah, exactly. And, and and how much how much more important is it for us to be motivated to run and exercise and keep ourselves healthy both physically and spiritually than it is to keep our car clean? I mean, really. He he's looking at me with conv- <laughs> convicting eyes because. I have to have a clean car all the time, so I'm struggling with the, how to answer his question there, and he's 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 having fun with it. But yes, you are right; it is much more important. But keeping a, a clean car is right up there. That's up there. That's up there. Yeah, absolutely. And hey, we hope you have enjoyed this episode. Give us five star reviews, both on the podcast, the YouTube videos, and all of that. It helps us when you do that. Make comments on the on the videos. If you make comments, that also helps us. It helps that video get get shared. And I don't know how all that works and how that helps, but I just know it does. So give us feedback. Let us know. Also, like I said before, Dean at RunForGod.com. If you've got questions or topics that you want to hear, we're here to try to make this go in the direction that you want it to go in so take a part in that management okay so again we appreciate you and who you are and we appreciate your commitment to our our sport that we love and also your commitment to god and and being uh being the best 
um, representative of Christ that you can be as well. So um, get some others with you. Go out there and find some others that have the same interests you do and bring them into the Run Club and have them join as well. Now, may God bless every step of every run. Go out there and shine your light. Good job, Dean. For more information about the Run for God ministry, go to runforgod.com. If you have questions about your salvation, click on the Peace with God tab. There's nothing more important. Thanks for joining us today.